Hello, and welcome to another RPD video. In this video, we'll go over how to design and draw a maxillary class one RPD. Before we start, it's important to have a plan. As you'd notice, this is a class one RPD, meaning we've got a fulcrum line right here. This means we've got to use indirect retainers, most likely on the two maxillary canines, and stress breaking clasps. Stress breaking clasps can be a cast circumferential clasp with a mesial rust or an eye bar with a mesial rust, called RPA and RPI, respectfully. Additionally, we can also use a modified T clasp with a mesial rust. Both the eye bar and the modified T bar are infrabulge clasps, which means they won't be compatible with any soft tissue undercuts or buccal vestibular depth that are shallower than 3 mm. When evaluating this cast, we notice that there aren't any buccal soft tissue undercuts and there is sufficient buccal vestibular depth, so we'll most likely be going with an eye bar. For that, we'll be looking for a 0.01 inch undercut on the mesiobuccal or the mid-buccal surface of the abutment teeth. Additionally, this cast seems to have good support, so we'll probably be using an AP strap for a major connector. If you're using an intraoral scanner for your diagnostic appointment, you could use the free online AI Dental Surveyor and Designer, which would allow you to virtually survey and design your cast. We will leave a link in the description for the software and a video demo. However, if you're doing this the analog way, then follow along this video to learn how to survey using the NAE Surveyor and draw your design on the cast and on paper. We will start by securing the cast onto the table. We want to make sure that the screw is tight enough so the cast is not moving, but not too tight as to break the cast. You also want to make sure that the occlusal plane of the cast is fairly level with the horizon. The first step of surveying is to analyze the cast. This is done using the analyzing rod, which looks like this. We'll go ahead and put that into the mandrel. The goal of analyzing the cast is to identify a path of draw that would require the least amount of adjustment on the guide plane areas. The ideal path of draw would require even adjustments on all abutments, rather than no adjustments on some abutments at the expense of the others. As we get the analyzing rod in contact with a surface to be adjusted, a space might appear gingival to the contact point. This means that the angle of the surface to be adjusted does not match the angle chosen for the path of draw, and this would require some adjustment onto that abutment. To minimize this adjustment, we might need to tilt the table in order to change that path of draw so that that surface would better align with the chosen path of draw and minimize the amount of adjustments needed. For this case, only a minimum adjustment of the table is needed to allow for an adequate path of draw. Once we are satisfied with the path of draw, it's time to switch out the analyzing rod for the 0.01 inch undercut gauge. We will now attempt to find those undercuts that we decided we needed in our initial plan. In order to identify the location of an undercut, the undercut gauge needs to contact the tooth at the shank and the disc. The undercut is located at the point of contact of the disc with the tooth surface. To mark that undercut, the cast is pushed away slightly and a pencil mark is made at the contact point of the undercut gauge, marking the undercut location. This process is repeated for all other abutments. Occasionally, we'd find that a tooth does not have the undercuts that we set out to find. This issue can be resolved in a variety of ways. We will leave a link up in the description for a video that talks about all the methods that can be used to address this issue. However, in the design phase, we will mark that area for modification using a red pencil. Now that we're done identifying all the different undercuts, it's time to draw the survey line. This is done using the lead and the metal sleeve. They're both attached together and then attached to the mandrel. To correctly draw the survey line, we're going to ensure that only the side of the lead contacts the tooth and not the tip. The side of the lead is rubbed against the highest contour of each tooth, and that leaves a line called the survey line. Anything under that line represents a degree of undercut. Notice how I'm using both my hands to undergo this procedure. 
The left hand is gripping the base of the table and is used to move the cast around. And the right hand is moving the mandrel up and down and around to ensure that only the side of the lead contacts the tooth. In most cases, only abutment teeth needed by the RPD are going to need to have survey lines drawn on them. And anterior teeth are most likely only going to need to have their facial and proximal contacts surveyed. With this, the surveying is completed, but in order to save the position of the cast, we need to tripod it. This is done using a 0.03 undercut gauge. The 0.03 undercut gauge is attached to the mandrel, and the mandrel is lowered so that it would allow that undercut gauge to touch the cast at three different areas without having to move the mandrel up and down. A red pencil is then used to mark each area of contact with the undercut gauge on the three different points on the cast. And red circles are added for easier visualization. Now we're going to go ahead and draw our design on paper. I use the cast to identify which teeth are missing and mark them with a blue line going through the center of the missing teeth. I'll now use the red side of the pencil to draw all the different rest seats on all the teeth. This includes the mesial rests for the RPI as well as the cingulum rests for the indirect retainers. I'll now go ahead and switch over to the blue side of the pencil and I'll outline each red rest seat with a blue outline representing the rest. We will then go ahead and start drawing the retentive clasps on each of those abutment teeth. When drawing eye bar clasps, it's important to remember that the origin of the clasp starts in the lattice one tooth away from the tooth being clasped. Now let's start drawing some minor connectors. We're going to draw a straight line coming down from each edge of each rest seat. We'll also draw minor connectors coming down from each guide plane. The last minor connector next to the edential span will be extended all the way back to the hamular notch as this will represent our finish line. And to finish off the major connector outline, we're going to connect the remaining lines on the outside of the minor connectors to each other. Now we're going to finish off the lattice by drawing little squares representing openings over each tooth. We'll draw two little tissue stops. And finally, we're going to go ahead and draw the denture base in brown coming out from the guide plane area, covering the eye bar and going all the way back to the edge of the major connector. We need to make sure that the edge in the back is flush with the major connector outline. Now to finish the AP strap, I'm going to start with outlining the AP strap area with these four lines, and then I'm going to connect them together. We're almost done with the drawing. The only thing left is to write up some information about each clasp next to its drawing. This includes the name of the clasp and the undercut that it's engaging. It's sometimes recommended to add a little bit more narrative, including the type of major connector, the rests, guide planes, as well as clasps. With that, we can now transition to drawing the same design, but on the cast. We will start by drawing our rest seats in red. The next thing to do is to draw the areas of the guide planes. Red denotes areas included in the mouth preparation. That includes areas like guide planes and undercuts that are going to be added or adjusted on the patient's mouth. Next, we're going to start drawing the framework in blue. We'll go ahead and follow the same steps we did on the paper drawing, starting by first outlining each rest seat like this, then dropping minor connectors down from each edge of each rest seat, just like that. Then we'll go ahead and outline the guide plane like this here. We'll also make sure to extend a minor connector like that. Now the last minor connector next to the edential space gets extended all the way back as this becomes our finish line. Then we'll go ahead and connect all these different edges of the minor connectors to finish off the shape of our major connector. Now that we have a better idea of how everything's going to look like, we're going to go ahead and draw the eye bar clasps. The tip is drawn at the undercut. Then 
we're going to try to visualize skipping one tooth space and draw the origin of the eye bar clasp. Then we're going to connect the tip with the origin to finish off the shape of the clasp. To finish the lattice, we're going to connect the anterior edge of the origin to the guide plane and the posterior edge to the back end of the major connector, leaving a little space there for the finish line to blend with the denture base. To finish the shape of the lattice, we're going to go ahead and add those holes over each tooth. Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and draw the denture base. We'll grab our brown pencil and start at our guide plane, going beyond our eye bar to the depth of the vestibule, and then around the maxillary tuberosity, making sure to blend with the edge of the finish line in the back end of the cast. We're also going to add in our tissue stops and draw the opening in the center of the major conductor to make it an AP strap. We're going to do this in the same way we drew it on paper, by drawing the individual components and then joining them at the angles. With that, your diagnostic surveying and design are complete, and you're ready to go into mouth preparation. The same concepts of design and drawing can be applied to a lab authorization to be sent to a lab after final impressions. We hope this was helpful, and we'll see you guys on the next RPD video.